In this video, I want to show you an example of how to calculate cost per equivalent unit for a company that uses the weighted average method of process costing. So let's take a company called Fitz's Root Beer. So they're a manufacturer, and let's say that they use process costing for their bottling department. Now in real life, companies that use process costing, they usually have a lot of different departments, and the costs flow through from department to department. But to make this example simple, let's just focus on this one bottling department. Okay, so the bottling department bottled 2,000 units of root beer during the period. And then at the end of the period, at the end of the period, they still have some root beer that is not completely finished, okay, for at least in terms of the bottling department. So there's 500 units that are 100% complete with respect to direct materials, and but they're only 80% complete with respect to conversion costs. And by the way, if you don't know what conversion costs are, it's just direct labor plus manufacturing overhead, and you just add them together. So how might it be that these 500 units are 100% done with direct materials, but 80% only with conversion costs? Well, think about it. Direct materials for root beer is just the actual liquid, the root beer itself. And so it could be that the root beer has been poured into the bottles, but there's still some additional work, some, some labor that needs to be applied, some other things that need to be done for them to be finished by the bottling department. Okay, so I put together a little table here. So we, I'm going to break this out by direct materials and conversion costs because very often they will have a different cost per equivalent unit. And to get the cost per equivalent unit, basically what we're going to do is we're just going to add the total cost and then we're going to divide it by the number of equivalent units. And we're going to do that for direct materials and then we're going to do it for conversion costs. Okay, so for direct materials, let's start with that. So we're going to add $1,000 plus 225. Now, let me tell you what these amounts are. So there was costs already in work and process at the beginning of the period. That's what the $1,000 is. And then there were costs incurred during the period, okay, during the actual year, that was 225. So the cost that you started with, and then the cost you incurred during the period, you add those together, okay? Now we're gonna divide it by the number of equivalent units. Well, there were 2,000 units completed, and there were 500 that were still in, or technically in process at the end of the period, but with respect to direct materials, they were 100% complete. So we don't have to, I mean, the equivalent units of these 500 that are still in process is 500 times 100%. So we don't need to really make an adjustment here. We just add up and we've got the 2,500. Okay, so we're gonna have $1,225 divided by 2,500 units. Okay, and that comes out to 49 cents a unit. Okay, that's the cost per equivalent unit for direct materials. Now, conversion cost is a little different because even though, so we've got the 2,000 units that were completed during the period, we have 500 units that are still in process, and remember, they are only 80% done. So to get the number of equivalent units for those, we're gonna take 500 and we're gonna multiply it by 80%. So 500 by 80% is 400. So I'm just gonna write 400. So that's the number of equivalent units there. And so then we've got our costs, 1200 plus 240. So we add that together and that's uh, 1,440. So 1,440 divided by 2,000 plus 400, which is 500 times 80%, okay? And so that's going to be 60 cents, okay? So let me, let me write that up here, 60 cents. And then over here we had 49 cents, 